So we're going to go a little deeper today into the notion of personal power. In yesterday's very quick video, um, the message that came through was that uh, no one's coming to save you. And that could be a very triggering thing for a lot of people to hear. Um, we're used to having something or someone outside of us to blame or something to point the finger at or um, something else to hold accountable for what happens in our lives. So it's a matter of practice, um, practicing, understanding what it means to have your own personal power because at first it does feel scary. It can feel even negative, but that's only because it's unfamiliar. And the truth of the matter is that when you take your own power back, a lot of the things that you feel like are wrong with your life will suddenly get better. So, one of the things that is the most triggering about this idea of personal power is when I use the word God and I tell people that um, their God is not coming to save them. And what I mean by that is that we've been taught that God is a deity outside of us and that he exists to punish, judge, um, and basically just give us rules <laughs> to live by. Um, and none of that is a bad thing, but when you misunderstand what's actually happening with the notion of God, you can end up in a lot of pain. A lot of suffering happens around the idea of God. So the best way to look at it as, is to understand that you have power inside of you and that is God. God is your own power, your power that's inside of you that you can access anytime you want to. It gives you all the answers that you need. It gives you all the guidance that you need. It gives you all the comfort that you need. So if you can just sort of make that shift from God being outside of you to God being in you, that is a great first step. And again, that you might experience some resistance to that some fear around that because it might feel like somebody's trying to tell you that God doesn't exist or that, you know, everything you've been taught is wrong. It's not that. It's we're looking for ways for you to feel better about your life, about yourself, and to help you walk in this world without suffering. So, the the other thing that kind of gets people caught up about this is the notion of heaven and hell. They're taught that these are physical places that you go to based on whether you were good or bad in this lifetime. A lot of people believe that, and I understand why they believe it, but the, the reason they believe it is because they were taught that. So the stretch that we need to make, the shift that we need to make in order to feel better about this is to understand that heaven and hell are not places. They are not judgments. They are not um, standards that you hold yourself to. Heaven and hell are both a state of mind. And you create that. 
You create heaven with your thoughts. You create hell with your thoughts and your feelings and your beliefs. All of that kind of works in to make you feel a certain way. But the good news about this is you have control over this. You have the authority in yourself to decide what you want to think, what you want to feel, what you believe, and whether it's serving you or not in your life. Another thing that we need to dismantle is that, is this idea that um, if you feel good, you're being bad. Or if you're feeling um, off the hook, if you're feeling not guilty, if you're feeling free, that there's something wrong with that. We're taught that human suffering is noble. And human suffering, it means that you're on the righteous path. And it's just not true. It's not true. It will keep you in suffering. Most of the people that come to me with what we call religious trauma are people who are struggling with this idea that they shouldn't feel good because feeling good is wrong. And it's not true. And it's a shame because it keeps a lot of people in suffering. It keeps a lot of people in suffering. 